Fiverr is a really cool site. Like, let's say that you needed voiceover work. Basically, this is a bunch of artists, graphic artists, voiceover artists, um, actors, um, silly things, voice impressionists, but it's not just all voice. There are a lot of people, um, hired guns is what they are in the art world. So if you are in a band, there are bass players, drummers. They have a bio and usually there's a sample like, okay, here's a guy. Dimitri, and I'm offering quality bass tracks, composing and recording, and work very fast. So, he's got a really good demo right here. He talks about himself. And basically, you can order his stuff. So, proceed to order. If you want to order, you click proceed to order $50. Now, the site is called Fiverr because sometimes most gigs start at $5. Others go up. There's photographers, there's um, book editors if you're a novelist. So I have got gigs, and one of mine is video production. Now, I've been working with this author. He wanted a video to promote his book that he's releasing. So basically, here's how it starts. The, the, the clients, they go to Fiverr. They look at these artists. He types in video production or video trailer for a book or whatever. And I come up, he looks at my work, he likes it, he hires me. So I like to get a feel for the artist, regardless if it's video or photography or audio engineering. I like to get a feel of where they're coming from. I've worked in photography, video production, and audio for a about 25 years each, not total, but each individual area. I've been in front of the camera, behind the camera, in the editing suite, and I like to get a feel of what's going on. The author, excellent to work with, he had great ideas, and right from reading his description, I knew I was gonna be excited to work on this project. I'm, I'm excited to work on the projects for all my clients. But the way he worded things and the way his vision was, I knew we were on the same page, no pun intended. He said, it's for creative minds, the hustle and bustle of the big city, and how to balance your life in the creative world, and I guess not to become too stressed and over, over, um, overwhelmed with it all. How to cope with it. An artist living in real life, which, you guys know this if you're watching this channel. You're some sort of an artist, and there are normal people, and then there are artists. I don't mean that we're weird. I just mean that we're a different breed, okay? You've got someone who takes their camera out once a year or whatever. And then there's people like you who take your camera out in case you see something. You walk past a trash can on the street, Maybe the way the light is hitting that trash can, creating the shadow on the sidewalk, you know you have to take a photograph of that image. Maybe it's black and white. You instantly have a story in your mind of what that image is. And I've been out on the street sometimes with friends. Friends who know me don't question, but people who don't know me as much say, 
What is he taking a picture of? It's just a trash can. Those people don't understand, you know? And sometimes, you know, I'll be walking downtown and there's a guy. I saw this. It happened a few months ago. There's a guy with his camera walking across a bridge. Beautiful bridge. The sun was hitting everything just right. There's no traffic. He had the perfect shot of an empty bridge with gridiron on each side, and the sun was setting just right. It was the perfect time of day to get a shot. The guy just walked past. Now, he wasn't in a hurry, and guess what? Even if you were, there's always time to get the killer shot that you're never going to get again. And he didn't take that shot. So instantly I thought, he's not a photographer. I may be wrong, but I don't think so. And, and then I'm like, this guy has no idea what I do, you know? He has no idea that I witnessed him missing the shot. I found in my archives some images, and I will go out and get stock footage of video. He wanted some video footage, time lapse of the hustle and bustle in the streets. I just happen to have some in my archives that I shot a handful of years ago. I sped it up to give him the time lapse. Um, I got some photos here, again, from a handful of years ago. I touched them up a little bit. It does seem like a lot of work but it's really not that much work if you have stuff prepared beforehand. I've got all my files categorized and archived by folder, by year, by if it's a wedding, if it's a band, whatever. So I've got a handful of things. If there's an image that I need, then I will go out and I will shoot it, all right? But in this case, um, this is done. Now, he loved the video. He said that I grabbed the feel of it exactly, just what he was looking for. That makes me feel really good. So I was able to kind of get into the feel of what he was looking for, capture it. Now it's important that you get in and get out. An editor's job is just that. It's editing. You don't want to waste time. You might have the coolest shot ever of, say, the sun setting. It might be a 15-second clip. You might not want to use that whole 15-second clip because even though it looks awesome, you just want to show it to the audience and get off of it. Find the best, say, two or three seconds of that clip if it's possible, right? Time-lapse it so you get more of it in a smaller amount of time. You don't want to stay on a shot that long unless the scene calls for it. Think about what the director wants, in this case the novelist. Envision what they want, and then it's your job to tell the story in a proper, precise way. Get in and get out. It's your job as an editor to make it work and make it tight. I can't tell you how many times people, they're novices, and we all have to start somewhere. But as an example, I go back to the example where somebody is, uh, you know, filming someone walking out of a store. And so what do they do? They go over the top. They film them walking down the aisle. They film them walking out the door. Then they come outside, film them walking towards the camera, film them walking away from the camera. Maybe they've got a scene of them walking past the camera. And then they walk up to the car and then they put their key in the door of their vehicle so they can drive away. All this is a given. I know that you want to get really nice shots with angles, but we all know that once you leave the store, you're going to be walking into the parking lot and putting your key in the door and sitting in your vehicle, starting the engine. But we don't need all those shots of you getting to your vehicle. It's a given that the guy is going to get to his vehicle. You could technically cut to him turning and looking out the door, seeing the door, thinking, I have to leave, and then instantly cut to him from the outside, walking towards the camera for maybe two seconds, walking to his vehicle, putting the key in the door, but make these two second clips, or one second clip, like walk out, walk across, key in the door, in the car, slam. So you might have him key in the door, sit in the seat, slam the car door, boom, 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 right? That adds, that's called um, jump cuts, and to make it quick, boom, 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 it makes the audience more interested. A lot of filmmakers are doing this nowadays. I know I'm getting off on a tangent a little bit, but I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit of what to do. 
Don't use footage in your final film just because you have it. I've told one of my friends who was editing footage similar to this, and he had all this really good footage, and it was getting a little boring. I know it's only 20 seconds, but if you're watching a guy walk across a parking lot for 20 seconds, it's like, let's go. The audience doesn't have to be professional editors to get bored. They're going to get bored. You've got to keep them interested, and that's showing them less is always more. All right? Always leave them wanting more. This is in music. This is in video production, filmmaking. That's why, you know, if you're in a band, you know, you never send three full songs to a record producer. Many people aren't doing that nowadays because it's all iTunes, but you get the point. Take the best 30 seconds of a song and just chop them together so you've got like 30, 30, 30. You've got 90 seconds, actually 20 seconds. And even then, that's a little too much. 15 seconds faded into each other so you've got like 45 seconds showcasing three songs leave them wanting more or they're gonna get bored and they're gonna move on to the next youtube video or the next band all right so anyway he really liked this now at the end he gave me these um logos and i put them together you can see i stacked them on top of each other and um you know, he thinks they look a little, cr a little uh, crowded up here. Now it's not bad. I put white banner in white banner so the black letters can be seen, and it looks really good. You got some of the city, the video footage there. I initially had the book in the center, and then after a few seconds, I brought these logos up on the bottom. And he said, let's have the book on the left side. And I did just that. But now he gave me different logos to use. So we're gonna get rid of these. And we're gonna go with his other logos. You can upload files back and forth to each other. You can chat with each other through um, messaging. Not real time, but like email through Fiverr. It's really cool, you can work that way. And that's what I like to do. Um, some artists will just do the work and send it back. I like to go back and forth a little bit to get in their head more. So he sent me this uh, photo that he did, laid out and designed. He's obviously a good artist, very good artist. And he's got the book. It looks like he's got the book on a slight little angle to the left. And um, I kind of like that. Don't know it was if it was intentional, but... Throwing things off on a little angle always creates movement in the still image. I like that. And then he's got available at online retailers in paperback, ebook, and audiobook. I love, love, love what you did in the beginning intro. It sets the tone quite well. Awesome. Thank you so much. And he's talking about this. Now, initially in the original, we didn't have anything but this opening city shot here. And I really like that, but this is a better idea. Um, he thought maybe we just put a title in the beginning, and I like that idea, but I went a step further, and I used this image of the female artist with her hands all painted. So instantly it sets the tone like, okay, she's a painter, or something in the art industry. You always wanna go deeper. Tell a story as best you can with as little explanation as you can, meaning words, okay? If we didn't have the words, are you designed to go the distance? And you just saw this lady with the hands painted, you know right away she's an artist, and this is gonna be something about maybe instruction in art or something like that, you get the idea. Then you add the icing on the cake of, are you designed to go the distance? Now. I could have started it with, are you designed to go the distance just with words on black screen? But then it's like, what, is this a running, is this a Nike ad? What is this? So by marrying image with words, 
you instantly know it's art. And what do you mean are you designed to go the distance? Right away, I would think something developing your career. Now, if her hands were not painted, that wouldn't get the message across at all. You would think, what is she doing? What is she doing? Is she a magician? What? You know? So you try to tell the story with as little wording as possible. Use the words to sculpt what is being shown, to kind of point the person in the right direction. Most people will get it. Okay? Anyway, just wanted to touch on that. <laughs>